All right, so today we're gonna to do some review of linear equations that have X on both sides. We'll throw in a few other kind of review questions in here today too, but you'll see that mostly the main thing I want you to focus on today is to really understand how to deal with these kinds of questions. Anyway, here we go. So again, today's plan, we'll continue with some review of linear equations. The main focus for today though, will be problems where X is on both sides of the equation. Um, and there'll also be a few word problems I'll throw in here. So mwahaha, wait and see, here we go. So. First two examples right off the bat, they're bracket style questions. These are not ones that have X on both sides of the equation. You should be able to get these ones going on your own. Pause the video here, give these questions a try and I'll go over it in a second. All right, so I'm gonna go over this now. There's a couple different approaches here. You could double dip those coefficients like negative nine through the brackets and then solve from there. If that's the approach you wanna take, by all means go for it. But for me, at least on this first one, uh, I'm going to start by dividing by negative nine on both sides. And the reason I'm going to do it on this one rather than double dipping the nine through is because I can see that negative nine actually does divide negative 63. So if I start by dividing by negative nine on both sides, you'll see that gets rid of the negative nine there and leaves me with X plus three equals negative 63 divided by negative nine, which is positive seven. And then of course I can just minus three from both sides and X would equal positive four. So that one wasn't too bad. Again, if you double dip negative nine through, you can still solve it. But in this case, because negative 63 does divide by negative nine, I chose to do that first. Uh, next question, same kind of idea. You could double dip the five through if you want, but I always just check negative 30. Does that divide by five? Uh, yes, it does. So I can divide by five on both sides there. That'll give me three minus X equals negative 30 divided by five is negative six. Uh, now, this is where things get a little bit tricky. I remember before the break, there were a lot of people who got caught up on these ones. It's three minus X equals negative six. Well, we want to get X all by itself. So maybe what I want to do first is get rid of this three. Technically, this is a positive three. So to get rid of a positive three, we need to minus three from both sides. This is going to give me minus X. That minus isn't going anywhere. So now it's like negative X equals negative six minus three. So we're going down three from negative six. That, that takes us down to negative nine. Uh, so negative X equals negative nine. We don't want negative X though. We wanna have a positive X. Uh, you might wanna make things simple. You might wanna say, well, negative X is negative nine. Clearly positive X would equal positive nine. And that is correct. But just to be a little bit more fancy and a little bit more mathematically correct, think of this negative in front of X as negative one. To get rid of a negative one times X, we need to divide by negative one on both sides. Uh, so that's really the more technical, true way of what we're doing here. Uh, so if we divide by negative one on both sides, we're just left with positive X equals negative nine divided by negative one, which is positive nine. And that is our answer right there. Uh, just as before, if you ever want to check your answers to make sure you got it correct, you can just plug the answer you got, the thing we put in boxes here, back into the original question and see if it works. I'll leave that to you if you want to do that on your own. Didn't ask for it, so you don't have to do it. But it is a good way to just make sure, hey, did you actually get the right answer? Uh, and if you didn't, you can always go back and try again. All right, here's a couple other examples. These are ones that have X on both sides of the equation. I do want you to pause the video here and give these ones a try, and I will go over them in just a second. All right, so this first one, not too bad. Again, we have X on both sides of the equation. The general trick to this is very first, get your smaller X's to the other side. So I'm gonna move this three X because it's smaller than seven X over to the other side by subtracting three X from both sides. That's gonna leave me with four X plus 10 equals positive 20. Then this becomes a normal two-step problem. So let's just minus 10 from both sides. This gives us four X equals positive 10. And then just divide by four. Uh, and really you can leave it as one of two ways. You could say it's X equals 10 over four, or that simplifies to X equals five over two. So that is totally acceptable as an answer. Um, but also five over two is quite a nice decimal number, right? It's not a repeating one or anything like that. It's not a really messy one. It's literally just X is equal to 2.5. When you have a nice easy decimal like that, I don't mind if you leave it as a decimal. I would have an issue if it was like 2.55555, then we have a problem. You just leave it as a fraction in that case. But in this case, because it's literally just 2.5, why not just leave it as 2.5? Makes our life way easier. Uh, this next one causes us a little bit of an issue. How we deal with it when X is locked away in brackets here, and X is on both sides of the equation, we got no choice but to double dip our coefficient through. So in other words, this five has to make its way through the brackets here first. 
that allows us to kind of release the x from the grasp of that brackets there. So if we release the x by doing that, we'll have 5x plus 5 times 3 is 15 equals 2x plus 21. And then this becomes a lot more like that first one we did up there. So now we can just minus 2x from both sides. Uh, that gives us 3x plus 15 equals positive 21. Then we can minus 15 from both sides. So we have 3x equals 21 minus 15, which is just 6. And that's a nice easy one. Uh, just divide by 3 on both sides, and we're left with x equals 2. Whew, perfect, right? Those aren't too bad. They're not too crazy. This one, on the other hand, this one's pretty crazy. I want you to pause the video here, give this one a try. Again, maybe I'll give you a reminder. A good trick is to multiply away your denominators first. I taught you guys that uh, in yesterday's video. Um, but however you want to go about this, by all means, go for it. All right, so I'm going to go over this one first. I'm going to use that trick I taught you the other day. Uh, multiply away your denominators first. So multiply each term by each one's denominator. Oops. So I'm going to start by multiplying by 2 to get rid of this here. And I have to do it by these ones as well. Now here's what's kind of nice. Multiplying this middle one by 2 also just accidentally also takes away its denominator. Who two birds with one stone, am I right? Anyway, so next one, we've got to get rid of this 4. So we'll times by 4. That gets rid of that there. But you have to hit these other ones with a 4 as well. And unfortunately, there's nothing left for it to uh, cancel out with. So what we're left with in the next stage is we have 1 times 4, which is 4x, because the x is still hanging out there, plus 1 times 4 is also just 4. Uh, and that equals... 3 times 2, which is 6, and then there's an x there, so we have 6x. This becomes not too big of a problem now. We just have, uh, you know, x on both sides. We want to remove the smaller amount of x, so let's minus 4x from both sides to get x just to one side of the equation. That gives us 4. Here we go. 4 equals 6x minus 4x is 2x. And then to get x totally by itself, let's just divide by 2 from both sides, and we have 2 equals x. Or in other words, x equals 2, whatever floats your boat there. Not too bad, okay? Hopefully, uh, this is pretty straightforward to you. If you're still having trouble with this, though, there's no shame in that. Just pop back into the Zoom and say, hey, Scott, can you explain this for me? I'm still stuck, and I can give you extra help whenever you need it. All right, so here's a word problem. This is one of those infamous uh, coin questions. If you feel pretty confident with this, or if you're like, hey, you know what? I want to think this over and see if I remember how to do it. Pause the video here. Give this one a try. But otherwise, I will go over it now. So Ashley has four times as many nickels as pennies and three times as many dimes as nickels. She has a total of $16.92. How many of each coin does she have? One second, I'm losing my voice here. Ah, there we go. Just had to get a drink. There we are. All right, so uh, what I do when I deal with these kinds of questions is I look at uh, how many of each coin I have just in terms of how they've explained it. And I think, which coin do I have the fewest of? Well, since we have four times as many nickels as pennies and three times as many dimes as nickels, the one we have the least of is pennies. So how about I say X equals the number of pennies? And then, of course, since we have four times as many nickels as pennies, we can say that 4X, so four times our number of pennies, is our number of nickels. There we go, number of nickels. Uh, then we have three times as many dimes as nickels. Well, we have 4x nickels. If we times that by 3, that would give us 12x, because 4x times 3 is 12x. 12x would represent our number of dimes. Now, in total, we know we have $16.92. This is where you start attaching a value to each one of these coins. Pennies, of course, are worth one cent. So we'll say one cent, which is $0.01 multiplied by the number of pennies we have, which is just x, so one cent times x, this represents the total value of all of our pennies, plus the value of a nickel is five cents, so 0 0.05, multiplied by the number of nickels we have, which is 4x. This little thing right here, this term we can call it, represents the total value of our nickels, plus our dimes. Dimes are worth 10 cents, so 0 0.10 multiplied by the number of dimes we have, which is 12x. This represents the total value of the dimes we have. The total value of nickels, or sorry, pennies, plus the total value of nickels, plus the total value of dimes added up is going to equal $16.92.
Now, we can take advantage of the fact that we based everything around x by just multiplying our coefficients through and then gathering our like terms. Uh, there's nothing to do on this one here, so we'll leave it as 0.01x, but on this one, 0.05 times 4x is 0.20x, plus 0 0.10 times 12x is 1.2x, and this still all equals 16.92. Uh, then we can add all of this together because they all have like terms. It's some amount of x plus some amount of x plus some amount of x. Just add your coefficients together. So 0 0.01 plus 0 0.20. Well, that's already 0 0.21 uh, plus 1.2. That, I believe, is going to give us 1.41x equals 16.92. Now, we've made it all this way without a calculator on this part right here. Really, unless you're an absolute math whiz, I don't see any way around it. We're going to have to uh, use a calculator here. So we need to divide both sides by 1.41. So if I divide by 1.41 on both sides, this is going to give me x equals 16.92 divided by 1.41. And that gives us a very nice number. 12 is equal to x. So what this represents here is we have 12 pennies. Because remember, in the very first line, we said x is our number of pennies. So x is 12. So that means we have 12 pennies. 4x is our number of nickels. So if you just times that by 4, you're going to see that we have 48 nickels. So just again, I times that by 4. Uh, and then we have three times as many dimes as nickels. So we now need to times 48 by 3 to get our number of dimes. And our number of dimes are going to be 144 dimes. There we are. You could have also just done 12 times your number of pennies. 12 times 12 is also 144. However you did it, it doesn't really matter. It's all the same thing one way or another. Uh, and if you're ever not sure, you could always check this by saying, okay, what would 12 pennies plus 48 nickels plus 144 dimes add it all together? Would that equal $16.92? Take my word for it. It totally will. All right, I think this is the last problem we have here today. Uh, again, if you want, you can pause this one and try it on your own. But other than that, I'm going to go over it now. So Mason has a job selling Bob Ross t-shirts. He gets to keep three quarters of the total profits as well as $55 per day. Uh, so in other words, even if he sold no t-shirts, he would still come away with $55 per day of work, right? Uh, so if he made $580 in one day, uh, one, I'd be very jealous and be saying, you know what, that's a lucrative business selling Bob, Bob Ross t-shirts. But two, if he made $580 in one day, how much were the total profits for that day. Uh, so here's the key thing. Uh, remember before the break, I always said the word of in math is really, really important. Of, when you see it as a number of something, generally speaking in math, that means multiplying. So three quarters multiplying by the total profits would be three quarters of the total profits, uh, as well as, as well as, as might as well you just say plus, so plus $55 per day. And that's what he gets to keep. So he made $580 in one day. So that's how much he got to keep. We can start plugging this together. Three quarters times the total profits. Let's just say X equals, uh, I, should, I was going to say number there, but I'll say X equals the total profit, especially because that's what we're looking for. How much were the total profits are unknown. So we should call it X. Uh, three quarters of the total profit is three quarters times X, three quarters X. Uh, as well as $55 per day, so plus $55 in a day, equals how much he gets to keep, which in that particular day, it was 580 bucks. That right there, we just formed a linear equation. Boom, just like that, out of thin air, we made ourselves a linear equation. Boom, now we can solve this. It's our own thing, ready to go. So let's minus 55 on both sides, because we want to find that total profit there. So 3 quarters x equals 580 minus 55 is 525. Uh, so in other words, that's three quarters of the total profit. We want to get the total profit all by itself. So we're going to need to divide by three quarters on both sides. But here's where we kind of run into a trouble. We have a dividing by a fraction. We really don't like that. So we have to keep change flip. Now by keep, it's the 525. Think of that as 525 over one. So keep it like that, change to a times and then flip to four over three. So this is going to be X equals 525 over one times four over three. I'm going to bust out a calculator on that one. 525 times four is 2,100. So I'll say X equals 2,100 
over one times three, which is just three, and then divide that by three, that is going to equal X equals 700. And that would be $700. That would be your total profits. So again, since it's a word problem, just make sure you're listing out in some way uh, what your answer is. In other words, communicate it to me. I don't require in this course that you write it out as a full sentence. I know sometimes math teachers do that and that's totally fine, that's their choice. Um, but as long as you just make it clear to me what, uh, what your answer means, I'll be happy with that. Anyway, I think we're done for today. Look at that and we made uh, actually really good time. We're only a little over 15 minutes. That was a nice short lesson, uh, which means you have tons and tons of time to work on practice problems. Yay, but you're so excited with that. So page 327, questions six to 15, these are the ones from even before the Christmas break. If you somehow still are not done those, you need to get those done today for sure. But no matter what, you should also be getting a good start at page 330, questions five to 20. But remember, omit question nine. Uh, as always, guys, especially because we have so much time left over in this, I am available in Zoom the entire time. So if anything today was kind of like tricky to you, make sure you're popping back in that Zoom and letting, uh, letting me know. And as always, of course, uh, make sure you're also signing on to Zoom before the end of the lesson within the last 10, 15-ish minutes. Just tell me what you got done for the day. Anyway, I'm done rambling. Best of luck, guys. Talk to you later.